Hello, my name is Samuel Delta-53. I was born in a tube and spent the first 23 years of my life living in fear and terror. And now I've traveled back in time from a terrifying post-apocalyptic future to deliver a dire warning of things to come. Please, for the sake of the future of all mankind, warn your friends and loved ones to not, under any circumstances, listen to the Rubber Chicken Podcast, the hilarious official podcast of ThatChickenSite.com. If you act now, it might not be too late. They're coming. Do you hear me? They're coming! Good morning, you sultry Scandinavian she-devils, and thank you for flying TRC Airways, your barely tolerated acquaintance in the sky, the official airline of that chicken site.com. Up, up, and away! Ladies and gentlemen, this is your uh, captain speaking. We're currently cruising at an altitude of 35 feet. If you look out your uh, right windows, you will see pedestrians yelling and screaming as they run down the streets for cover. Uh, Stewards will explain the safety precautions on this aircraft, but let me just tell you now, it probably won't help you. Philip Truffleburger was disembarking his Zeppelin when he heard a mysterious scraping noise inside the gondola. Out stepped the man with hats for hands, Sir? who proceeded to place them. Sir, all I need is for you to fasten your seatbelt. Sorry! Hearing disorder. Meanwhile, several rows back. And what do you do for a living, young man? I narrate a podcast, a humorous internet radio like program. What do you do? I'm you! Ten years from now, and I've come back to warn you about a terrifying. Hello. Post- My name is Stephen Hawking. I'm Satan! You may have read some of my literature about black holes. You may have visited me in hell if you are a sinner who died. Period, period, period. I wish I had a chair like yours, Dr. Hawking. I wish I wasn't a quadriplegic. H-A, 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 H-A. I'm not sure I understand you, Dr. Hawking. Oh, Satan. You are so uh, good great. Good morning, everyone. Just chiming in to let you know that we all hope you have a safe and enjoyable flight. And uh, if anyone happens to spot two wings laying around, please let the cabin crew know straight away. Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am, is this seat free? The guy next to me won't yeah, show yeah, up sure, no problem. Uh, I, no, 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 it's taken completely. D- don't I know you? Please, not again. I- I'm not your girlfriend. They cast me as a character, a-, a character in your podcast, but I said no because someone couldn't distinguish between fiction and reality and wouldn't stop calling me, and I can't sleep with the light off anymore, and I'm an actor. Do you hear me? An actor! Of course, Fiona. Don't you dare. Listen, I owe you an apology. What? I was going through a really rough phase, but I've been doing a lot of soul searching since then. That stalker's obsession, it was a cry for help. But now I've gotten you out of my mind, and I've come to realize that. Carry your headphones, sir. Thanks, Fiona. I've come to realize. Don't leave me, Susan. Realize what? Shh, I'm tired of trying to make it work, Robert. I mean, don't those kids remind you of us back in the day? What? Protect me. Just what? That's just a self-fulfilling prophecy, Susan. Talking like that. Robert, I'm going to be five years old next month. And I feel like maybe I've just outgrown you. Well, what am I going to tell my mom? You know, my parents have been together for three years, and they had a lot invested in this relationship. Well, it's not about your parents, Robert. It's about us. They bought us this sandbox we play in, Susan. You can't just split up a sandbox. Oh, take the sandbox if it means so much to you. You're damn right it means so much to me. We have so many memories here. (laughs) I won't be able to look at my buckets again without remembering your sand castles. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-pilot speaking. We're currently 40 minutes out from Singapore, and I would like to ask you to return to your seats and fasten your seatbelts, because shortly the captain will begin his descent into madness. Yes. Yeah. He did? <laughs> You're all kidding Stop me. Stop using your phone. It's dangerous. Poppycock. It's just an old wives' tale. Jesus Oh, Christ. God, the plane suddenly engulfed by mysterious fog. William Shatner and John Lithgow were ripping apart the engines. Of course. This begs the question. What am I doing? Oh, on the wing. Bung, where are you calling? 
a freighter passing through a small triangular region between Bermuda, Puerto Rico and Florida? Why? The subject first identifies a major flaw in its own behavior, and identifying acknowledgement as the first step toward redemption humorously draws attention to it. The podcast sketch started with a self-referential joke, and uh, I thought, yeah, yeah, they're making fun of themselves, I, I can respect that. The subject mistakes this self deprecation as a definitive means of self-improvement. Thus, drawing attention to this initial drawing of attention will only make matters better. But then they made fun of themselves making fun of themselves, and, and that was just weird. In what it mistakenly believes to be avant-garde and humorous... What are you listening to? Oh, some documentary. Oh, lovely. ...point of no return. And then they reference that. And then they reference that. And then any they good? That. What? And then they that. Is the show any good? I don't know. I haven't had a chance to hear it. What would you like for dinner, ma'am? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. And your husband? Um... Hello there. Welcome back to Tony's Brain. I am, of course, the Ego, and our panel tonight consists of the Inner Child, <laughs> the Sex Drive, Hello, ladies. Hunger, <laughs> and joining us via the Optic Nerves is the Associate Professor of Colonial Agribusiness in the Agriculture and Sophistry Department of Regina's Moose Mouth University. Hi, he is a uh, Fellow of the Royal Academy of Entrepreneurs and this year's recipient of the prestigious Kellerfield Research Grant. Well, actually, we- Please join me in welcoming the Honorary Professor at the University of Wales, Abbotsworth, Dr. Kenneth Skip Ackerman, RDP. Dr. Ackerman, welcome. Well, it's great to be back on the show. Our topic uh, tonight, Tom's uh, Dinner, Fish Sticks or Tater Tots. Skip? Well... Fish Sticks it is. Thank you, everyone. Great to have you back, Skip. I'm the Ego. Good night. Mm, you love the fish sticks. I know right now it doesn't seem possible, but you'll find someone else to build sandcastles with. Someone who's better with a spade. I don't want someone else's spade, Susan. I want your spade. Your sandcastles were perfect. No girl will build me better sandcastles than you. Time heals all wounds, Robert. It wears against our lilacs and our roses. Susan, all our friends are the same. I joined the pony club for you. I didn't make you. That was a decision you made. I didn't force you to do anything, so don't make this more difficult than it is. And then, then they... And then they referenced that. And, and then they referenced that. And that... I'm sorry, I did... I, I, Brain, <laughs> unable to cope with the exponentially draining rod of boot, liquefies and evacuates through the ears. The subject develops a sudden interest in premixed drinks, rap music, and finally... Tragically, the purchase of the season one DVD of popular cable television series, Pimp My Ride. Next, on the Educa Fun Channel, background dialogue. Is it worth hey, the effort? What is it? Do you fly often? In the early 21st century, the in flight documentary industry had reached saturation point. Desperate studios turned to drastic measures, planting passengers to interrupt those listening to rival productions at vital moments, irrevocably. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Hope you're enjoying your flight. I'm sure some of you have noticed that our in-flight entertainment system is experiencing technical difficulties at the moment, but I assure you that this is the least of our problems right now. Our starboard engines have been experiencing some difficulty. Several of our gauges have for some reason ceased functioning. Oh, good news. Our flight crew has just informed me that the problems concerning Movie Channel 4 have been fixed. You may now continue your viewing of Daddy Day Camp starring Cuba Gooding Jr. Thank you for flying Atlas Air, and may God have mercy on us all. Oh, now that's just grand. Oh, wonderful humor from that Oscar-winning Negro actor, Cuba Gooding Jr. I say I do enjoy that bit where that fellow gets hit in the groin. <laughs> hey, Ben, didn't I kill that guy last production meeting? The same meeting we decided not to. To reference previous podcasts? Mm Mm-hmm. At last, everything is going according to this. Huh? Nothing, nothing. Nothing but the impending activation of the... What? No, no, never mind. Rock the Casbah, Callista Flockhart. It's time for an out-of-character interlude. Celebrity Anecdotes with Andre. 
<clears throat> Fiona there being a good sport and doing the intro even though she's on her period. Now, this week on Celebrity Anecdotes with Andre, I'm going to be speaking to a real-life celebrity. She was recently seen as the spunky Anna Lucia on TV's Lost. She's just wrapped principal photography in her new film, Battle in Seattle. But you probably know her as Marine Number 2 in popular Xbox game, Halo. It is my great honor to welcome to the podcast, Michelle Rodriguez. Hello, Michelle. Welcome, Michelle Rodriguez. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, apparently there is no god. Ladies and gentlemen, my co-pilot would just like you to know that he's not wearing any underwear. So, if any ladies want to come up and have a look, that's okay with him. It's time for History with Harold Holt. I'm your host, Harold Holt, deceased. I'm here today to talk to you about aviation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain again. Uh, apparently that joke was meant to finish with the line, have a look at his cockpit. But, uh, it didn't happen, so I apologize. Thank you. Aviation was invented by Isaac Newton. Newton was a small man, very close to the ground, so naturally he dreamed of the skies. His dreams were cut short by a runaway mail train carrying his patent for the invention of aviation. The development of aviation was set back several months until the Marx Brothers flew their auto gyro from Portobello Road, London. It ran on a thimble full of corn oil and flew several thousand miles. Tragically, that journey was cut short by a runaway mail train carrying their patent for the invention of corn oil. Aviation took a back seat for many years, and then climbed into the front in the form of a strapping young fellow named Stretch Armstrong, who circumnavigated the moon. There he remains to this day, a silent sentinel to the stars. This has been History with Harold Holt. See you next time. But I gave the best months of my summer to you. I'm sorry, Robert. I wish I could make this easier for you. Well... Can I at least have one last Eskimo kiss? I, I don't think so. Why not? Eskimo kisses always You're complicated a car, things. Dr. Hawking. AJ, AJ, AJ. Colon dash parentheses. Exclamation point question mark. Rainbow emoji. I refuse to deal with this. This is exactly why I turned down the road. Please, just hear me out, sweetie Fluffkins. Don't you think... We met once in a meeting for half an hour. Don't you think it's time we considered bring our own little bundle of joy into the world? For the last time, I'm just an actor. And isn't it worth setting petty differences like that aside? Not for us, sugar popples, but for our future family. You're insane. I... I... I can't, I, I, I can't deal with this anymore. How can you be so selfish? My biological clock is ticking. I'm changing seats. Don't follow me. It's your personal space, and I respect that. But please, take this in case you change your mind. Is this a test tube of a... Uh, uh, oh. Oh. You had this before the conversation started. Are you saying it might not be fresh enough? Leaving now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. In a few minutes you may experience a gentle rocking of the wings and perhaps a noise in the fuselage. Uh, don't worry, it's only turbulence and it's perfectly normal. Captain Bogey on the radar, coming in hard right. Arm the sidewinders, begin countermeasures. Negative, negative. He's coming in too fast. Stardog, this is control. Juke left, you have three more bogeys coming in hard right. Ice cat, do we have a confirmed lock? We're scotch ammo, Stardog. You better make this one count, kid. Barrels away. <laughs> Stardog, this is control. Kills confirmed. Repeat, kills confirmed. Mission accomplished, gentlemen. Bring her home. And as this ragtag collective of heroes and villains rode their gigantic metal bird towards an uncertain future, little did they realize their destiny was already being written on the ground below. Oh, I'm down, catch him now! Oh my god! Have you looked at your watch yet? Huh? Yes, I'm you. Have you looked at your watch? Uh, I, I... Don't look at your watch. When I was your age, my future self visited me and told me not to look at my watch. It's happening. So, of course, curiosity got the better of me and I looked at my watch. This set emotion a chain of events so unspeakable, so catastrophic, that I was compelled to create a time machine to prevent this whole sorry mess from ever happening. Okay, I won't look at my watch. Yes, that's what I said too, but here we are now. Don't make this another self-fulfilling bloody prophecy.
This time I'm serious. You do. Stop. You're in a self-perpetuating causal loop and I'm here to put an end to it. Yes, that's exactly what my future self said last time and what my future future self said the time before. Oh, bugger, I'm late again, aren't I? Don't worry, slightly further future self. After this, I'll travel back again to set things right once and for all. No, don't. You'll only make things worse. Trust me on this. Yes, I remember my future future self saying exactly the same thing to my future self when I was in that guy's shoes, huh? but I can assure you I am no such You're coward. all insane! Oh, God, I'm insane. I hear you, buddy. I remember saying much the same thing too, right before this sentence gets interrupted with the sudden appearance of... Am I too late? What time is it? Oh, it's 10.30. No! no! Well, that was new. Mmm, how ominous and foreboding! Note to self, do not travel back in time. Funny, I seem to recall being on an aeroplane. Hello, ma'am. Oh, hello, dear. Um... I was told to come here because there was a problem with my package. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Let's see here. Have you ever done cocaine? No, I've never done cocaine. What about heroin? Oh, heroin. Is this your apple core, ma'am? Oh. Oh, is that illegal, is it? It is very illegal, ma'am. Have you ever participated in a strip search, ma'am? Oh, dear. If you'll just follow me, we'll have this over in relatively little time. Tell me, ma'am, do you do much stretching? Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Damn, baby. You know in school when they have career day in grade three. And they ask you what you want to be when you grow up, girl. I told them I don't want to be no fireman. And I don't want to be no astronaut. But I do want to be something similar to an astronaut. There's only one thing I want to be, baby doll. I want to be an angel. High above the world, sitting on a cloud, munching on a bird. Angel, fly above it all. Set you up, girl, if I weren't asexual. Oh, baby doll. Check it, growing up in Compton, my atheist parents told me angels evolved from the archaeopteryx. First winged creature to be rocking feathers. Big fluffy ass clouds were its favorite weather. Now if I was an angel, no, I'd never age, y'all. I'd ride fluffy clouds until I was deranged, y'all. And now for the haters saying angels is whack. I'm a bridge compilation of angel big facts. facts. On the Galapagos Islands, Charles Darwin found angels, but since then the angels have become endangered. Not only do they get sucked into jet engines, but poachers hunt them for their valuable urine. How about that? Educating y'all motherfuckers. Sunday school, baby. Seven days a week. Any given Sunday, girl. Al Pacino. Godfather Part 2! Two. Angel. angel! High above the world, sitting on a cloud, munching on a bird. Angel! Fly above it all, sex you up, girl, girl if I weren't asexual. Angel! High above the world, sitting on a cloud, munching on a bird. Angel! Now fly above it all, baby, sex you up, girl if I weren't asexual. Angel! Fly above the world, sitting on a cloud, munching on a bird. Angel! Fly above it all, sex you up, girl if I weren't asexual. Lord, are we going to go to hell for singing this song? No, Andre. I don't believe in hell. Oh, well, that's a relief. We Hindus call that eternal torment the house of clay. I didn't know you were a Hindu. There's a lot of things don't know about me. What the, like what? I want to be an angel. Oh. Queer. Next week on Schindler on Ice... Dr. Watson is in for a surprise when Professor Moriarty conceals a whoopee cushion under his recliner. A hard as nail shop who plays by his own rules proves to be a very irritating chess opponent for Billy. And the announcer is in for a surprise when he's brutally murdered in the very first scene. I can't wait! Captain, you aren't altering our course. I think you and I deserve a little vacation, kid. We're going to Cuba. Ha, yeah! Did you leave the intercom on? <laughs>